G'day, it's Pete here. Today I'm going to do a, a featured lesson on uh, squeeze play. Uh, squeezes are often something a bit confusing and not too many people know about it, but they hear about it and think that it looks really fancy and it's a really tough play. I'm going to show you some hands where squeezes are really kind of easy and they just sort of happen, and then some where they're like, well, kind of really difficult and you have to work out lots of things. Um, what I'm hoping that people get from this is some squeezes you can just do but really easily and take that away. Um, I've set up some hands and some of them come from a this book, Bridge Squeezes Complete by Clyde E. Love. Uh, really good book, bit bit technical but uh, if you want to learn, uh, learn about squeezes it's a pretty decent book. What I'm going to cover today is what is a squeeze? Uh, some of the terminology, because squeezes have lots of different uh, bridge terminology compared to just regular bridge, and I'll just cover what they are and why people use them. Uh, some tips on when to play a squeeze, and also some sort of tips on how to actually play a squeeze, and then we'll run through some examples and hopefully you can get something out of it. Okay. Uh, so, what is a squeeze? So a squeeze is basically when uh, one of your opponents uh, is trying to hold on to lots of cards, but just can't. So everyone's limited to 13 cards at the start, and at every trick that goes down. Usually you think of squeezes as an end position, so like the last four cards or something. Now, in the end position, when everyone's limited to four cards, one opponent might want to hold on to five cards because they have to throw something useful away. Um, so squeezes are when the opponents have too many useful cards and they can't just hold on to them all. Um, so you need to get them to throw it away and as soon as they throw it away, they give you an extra trick. Um, and there's usually nothing they can do about it, uh, but it's just making them run out of useful cards. So this is different to all the other ways of making tricks such as finesses and things like this. This is just getting the opponents to discard something that they would like to keep on to but unfortunately can't hold on to all the cards. That is in an essence what a squeeze is. Now, it's got lots of terminology around it um, so I'll just run through some of it. It's got rectify the count, threats and menaces, guards, entries, uh, squeeze cards, transferring the menace, and positional. Um, these are all some words that you might hear pop up around the place when people are talking about uh, squeezes. I'll just run through the most important ones. Um, rectify the count. Now what this means is when you're trying to play a squeeze, you basically want only one loser remaining most of the time. Uh, I'll talk more about it later. Um, but that just means getting down to that position where you've only got one loser. Uh, threats or menaces. Uh, threats are just something that you threaten your opponents might become a winner if they don't guard it. Uh, so it's just some little card that's not going to win a trick. but because you've got that there, your opponent now has to protect against it, so that's a threat. And a guard is what your opponents have to do where they have to look after uh, that suit to stop your little card winning a trick. Uh, entries, we all know what entries are, um, but they're very important with squeezes. You need to be able to get between the appropriate hands in, at the right time. Um, so it's very important to remember that uh, entries are vital to squeezes. Uh, sometimes there's something that's positional or otherwise it's automatic. What it means by that, positional means you might only be able to squeeze one player, whereas automatic means it doesn't matter which opponent has all the cards, but they have to throw something away. Sometimes people use the word squeeze card, and what that means is that if you play the final card, well, you play a card which then makes the squeeze operate. Uh, it's just a certain winner that uh, then puts all the pressure on the opponent. Usually, the final winner you've got, in some of the more esoteric squeezes, it might be earlier. 
And transfer the menace means that uh, one opponent might be guarding something and you want to get the other opponent to guard it so you lead something and get uh, transfer get the opponent to cover it so that you pass which opponent's going on. That's just a bit of the terminology, don't worry too much about that, but I just thought I'd quickly cover it in case I say any of those things, uh, such that you might have a vague understanding of what I'm talking about. Alright, the next thing is trying to work out when you want to play a squeeze. So, choosing when to play a squeeze is one of the toughest things. So, you're playing a hand and you have to realize, oh wow, this is a squeeze hand rather than I should take a finesse or do something else. So, how do good players work out when to play a squeeze? So, I'll just cover a few of the times that they know how to do it. Um, one is, you've got nothing else to play for. You can see that you've got no legitimate finesses or breaks or anything like that. You're just, it looks like you're doomed, but then you think, okay, maybe there's a squeeze on. So that if there's just nothing else that you can see, maybe thinking about squeezes is a good idea. Often, squeezes can just give you this slight extra chance, like where you might be thinking, oh, I was going to play for this suit to be 3-3 or something like that. But instead you can think, oh, if I keep this, then I can either play for this suit to be 3-3 three, three, or this little extra chance of a squeeze. So people often uh, think about squeezes just as a backup plan to give themselves just a little bit extra chance. And other ones are when you've uh, worked out where missing cards are and you know that a certain line's not going to work, such as a finesse isn't going to work, because you know where the missing cards are. Um, so... There are some of the times when you'll choose to play a squeeze. So that was, you got nothing else to play for. You want to just give yourself a little bit of an extra chance. Or you know that the alternative line isn't going to work because of the bidding or the play so far or something like that. Okay. So now we'll move on to how to play a squeeze. So the main things you want to do is run your long suits. Take all your winners at some point. Um, that's basically what happens. You just apply pressure by running your long suit. But before you do that, you want to make sure that you've only got one loser left. Now, uh, there are some esoteric squeezes where you can do it with more than that. Um, but for the most part, you want it such that if you took all your winners, you're going to take all but one trick. Now, if you get that and you time it such that you've got all but one trick, that's when you've rectified the count and a squeeze is most likely to operate. So you get to a position where you only have one loser and then you run your long suits and see if uh, they're squeezed. Uh, it's important to think about what you're trying to threaten to make a winner. Which little cards are you hoping might win a trick, and you keep them as long as possible. Uh, a common thing people do is uh, they see like a little card in some side suit and then they've got uh, like Ace Queen Jack 10 to 6 or something that if the finesse works it's all gonna work and they'll take like 12 tricks when they only need 6 or something. And they've got a whole bunch of tricks so they just throw down and just keep one suit. People that are good at squeezes keep uh, little cards in as many suits as they can just to keep these threats in other suits. Um, it's probably better done with an example rather than uh, just saying that. Um, but anyway, you, you want to keep uh, things that annoy your opponents rather than just uh, one suit. So keep stuff that threatens your opponents might become a winner and then they have to guard that suit is basically what I was trying to get at. Uh, it's important to work out where the missing cards are if you can so the bidding or the play might give away information and then you can choose to if you know where the missing cards are that'll help you play the squeeze. Um, other people think that uh, squeezes require lots of counting and things um, there 
are occasional hands where you have to count out a lot of stuff. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of them just go, okay, was this relevant card discarded? No. Okay, I'll play this other suit. I don't know if it's going to win all the tricks, but it might win all the tricks. And you just wait until the end. So largely just keeping an eye out for one relevant card. But every now and then there's some squeezes where you have to uh, count out certain hands. Uh, but I prefer the squeezes where you just keep uh, an eye on one card and then just uh, see if the other suit works. Okay, um, so I've just briefly touched on what is a squeeze, some terminology, when to play a squeeze, and vaguely talking about how to play a squeeze. I'll now give you some example hands and we'll talk through them. Uh, so in this first one, uh, we don't have any bidding, but we end up in seven spades. Okay, and the opponents lead the Jack of Diamonds. Okay, so looking at this hand, what we want to see is we first count our losers. So we've got uh, two heart losers. Uh, if spades break really poorly, we'll have uh, one spade loser. But we have no diamonds, no clubs, two hearts, and possibly one spade. And if you look at this, our one of our heart losers uh, can go away on the third diamond. So we've only got one heart loser. Um, so what we want to do here is start by drawing trumps. Um, we've got ace king nine fifth opposite queen eight fourth. If they're two two or three one, we have no issues whatsoever. If they happen to be four nil, we can only pick up jack ten fourth spade in the east hand. If west has it, we can't. So with east, we've got the ace king sitting over the jack ten. If west has it, we've only got the queen sitting over it. So if you need to take a double finesse, you need uh, uh, two higher cards over it to actually make it work. So to play this spade suit correctly, you want to play a low spade to the queen. And they do break 4 now, so it was good that we did that. And now we can uh, finesse the spade. And they put in the 10, so we have to find a, another way back. So across to the ace. And we finesse the spade again. And then we draw the final trump. Okay, so at this stage, it still looks like we've got a heart loser. So if we were thinking about when do we play a squeeze, one of the options was we've got nothing else to play for. Okay. Uh, so what could we hope for in this stage? So we've drawn trumps. Uh, we started with four diamonds in the north hand opposite two here, and we had a 4-4 heart fit. Okay. Now what we can hope for is that the same person has uh, the diamonds stopped as the hearts. So if the person who has three hearts, because we had the ace and king, the person who has three hearts also has at least four diamonds, uh, then we're all fine. Now, what we want to do here is just simplify it. So we'll take our uh, king of hearts, Okay, and they broke 3-2. So all we want to keep an eye out for is that final heart. Okay, If we see any heart discarded, we know that our hearts will be good. But we haven't seen any yet. So at this stage, we just play a club. And we take our winners. Remember, part of our thing was run our long suit and take our winners. Okay, so we've taken our clubs, and we uh, take all our winners. This includes our final trump. So, take our trump, 
And at this stage, I'll show you the uh, all the hands. Okay, we play our final trump. Now, West is the only person that uh, is guarding the diamonds, so they have to hold on to three diamonds because dummy's got ace king six of diamonds, and all the diamonds will come good if they don't. And they also have to hold on to the queen of hearts because if they throw a heart. My heart is good. So they are squeezed. They're hold, holding on to too much. East, on the other hand, not holding on to anything relevant. Their clubs are all useless. But this is what a squeeze is, where one opponent's holding too many good cards and is in trouble. So it really doesn't matter if uh, West chooses to play the queen or to throw a diamond. Um, but let's say they throw a diamond. Now, I haven't seen a heart, so let's just throw the heart. and. As you see, I've kept the heart threat in my hand, in the south hand, and the diamonds, they're still there. So it doesn't matter which opponent this was happening to. But even if I haven't been counting at this stage, I haven't seen the queen of hearts. I don't know if I'm making my contract, but I can lead a diamond and just play the top diamonds and see what will happen. I knew that my heart wasn't going to be a winner, but this one, was. So there, it looks like um, you got uh, a trick out of nowhere. That's basically what a squeeze looks like. Um, yeah, so that was the uh, first hand. Uh, and we'll move on to the second hand. I'll just make the high cards hide again. <clears throat> so on this one, uh, we've got some bidding from the opponent. Uh, they open one heart, we make a weak two, and my partner raises to four spades. Okay, so let's take some time and think about this as well. So we're in four spades, and it looks like we've got three heart losers. We also could take a club finesse or a diamond finesse. We have no diamond losers, but we could take a diamond finesse. Um, but we've got three heart losers, no spade losers, and we've got one club. So we've got four losers, need to get rid of one of them. And the opponents led the Queen of Hearts. So let's just take a moment to work out where the missing cards are, because we've had some bidding. Now, Dummy came down with a pretty good hand. They have uh, 20 points. So Dummy's got 20 high card points, and we've got 6. So we've got 26 high card points between us. So that leaves 14 for the opponents. And we know that East has at least 12 of them. So... West has led the Queen of Hearts, so can West hold either the King of Clubs or the Queen of Diamonds? No. We now know from the bidding that that won't work. So again, one of the other times to think about squeezes is when you know the other lines won't work. So here we know the line of taking a Club Finesse or taking a Diamond Finesse. Both of those won't work, so we have to think about something else. So we've thought about the hand and we've placed lots of the cards in the other hand. So they start with a heart and they just take the first three rounds of hearts. Okay. So we now only have one loser. So that was the other important thing for squeezes, is rectifying the count, or getting it to such that you have all winners but one. Uh, so here, I've only got one loser, and we know that East has uh, both the Queen of Diamonds and the King of Clubs, so our finesses aren't going to work. So what can we do about that? All right, so we want to think about uh, squeezing them and what threats we can do. Uh, so we know that we want to guard, get East to guard uh, clubs and diamonds. So we'll need to run all our things, but we want to get the timing right. Okay. 
So I'll just show you uh, the importance of entries and getting the timing right. So I'll just play the hand slightly wrong and you'll see what goes, what happens. And then I'll reload it up and we'll show you how to play it the correct way. Okay. So if we just won and drew all the trumps, Okay, so we've gotten down to the final point, and we'll, if we play the final trump here, we know that East has the king of clubs and the queen of diamonds, and they have to hold three diamonds to the queen, and they have to hold two clubs to the king. But if we play the final trump here, our threat in clubs, or our threat in diamonds, uh, disappears because dummy gets squeezed first. So notice that we have to throw a threat away from our dummy first. So the timing here is slightly off. Um, so we hadn't thought about what our threats are and things like that. Um, so if I throw this, then East can... Uh, I'll just uh, let you see all the cards again. If we throw a club, then East can uh, throw a club and that's fine. If we threw a diamond, then East can throw a diamond. So they're not actually feeling the pressure because our threat is gone. Okay? It won't actually work. Uh, so I'll go back and show you how to uh, get the timing slightly right. With that hand, if uh, If we swapped the east and west hand such that both finesses were working or whatever, then the other hand would have been squeezed because they would uh, have to play before we squeezed our dummy. Uh, but we're talking about getting the other hand. So they take the first three heart tricks. and they play a trump at this stage. So what we noticed was uh, dummy got squeezed because we had to throw away our club from the north hand first. But if you look at our clubs, we've got the ace, queen, jack, and the ten. This ten is as good of a threat as the queen is. Okay, They're all equals. So what we actually want to do at this stage is something called a Vienna coup, where we get the eight sort of unblock an ace out first and just keep our lower card there. Now, if we run all our spades, let's see what happens. Okay, so we play a spade. We draw trumps. And we don't need the queen jack of clubs anymore because our threat is the ten. Okay, so when we play the final card, the squeeze card, what happens when... We're, so we've got the Ten of Clubs and the Queen. They're both as good at threatening the King, and they still have to guard the King no matter what does happen. So we throw the Queen away, and now East is stuffed. They, they've got nothing they can do here. So we can just th throw that, and now if East throws a Diamond, we don't need to count diamonds, like there was no issue with that. All we had to do was keep an eye out for the King of Clubs, that's the relevant card we wanted to keep an eye out for. And when we throw the Queen, if we don't see the, the King, all we want to do is, we know our 10's not a winner, we know that the finesse isn't working, but we can just play the diamonds from the top. We didn't need to count out diamonds, but all we had to do was realize we hadn't seen the King of Clubs, and then we've got the rest of the tricks. Every now and then, it, like, it might not work, or you got something wrong, but just keeping an eye out for the relevant card and realizing that we haven't squeezed them out of this, so we want to play for the other one, is what you usually do. Um, so that was just about getting uh, the 
timing right and realizing what you wanted to be your threat card. It didn't need to be the Queen of Clubs, it could have just been the 10 and working out whether you get the timing right. Lots of this just needs some practice, so you just need to play it a fair bit um, before you can do that. Okay, so on this next hand, uh, East opens, we overcall, partner bids, and we get to four hearts. So two clubs was just a good raise of hearts, and we get there. And the opponents start with a club. Alright, so this hand's uh, really tricky, so I'll just uh, talk you through it. Just showing you some of the things that are capable with squeezes. I don't expect you guys to play this very often, but uh, understanding what can be done is vital. So we'll take a moment at trick one. Okay, so they uh, led a club, and if we count our losers, we've got three club losers and a spade loser. Okay, there's no finesses that we can take. Uh, we could hope that there was a singleton uh, queen of diamonds. That's about all we can hope for. Singleton king of spades, pretty unrealistic, because it needs spades 7-1, with West not taking any bid. Um, now, if we think to the bidding as well... Uh, East opens the bidding, and we have 12 points here, opposite uh, 13 here. So we've got 25 points. So the opponents have 15, and we know that East has at least uh, at least 12 of them. So we'll let them take their clubs. Okay, and they've taken the first three club tricks. And if they let a spade now, we'd be able to play a low spade and finesse it or something like that. If they let a diamond, we could try putting the jack in, that sort of stuff. But they just uh, lead a heart. So now our options are basically limited. We don't really have much to play for here, so what we want to think about is squeezes. And one thing we could hope for is the person that's guarding the spade also has the only guard of diamonds. So we've got four diamonds here and two in our hand, so we've got six, so there's seven diamonds out there. And for a squeeze to work, we need just one person guarding the diamonds. If they both can guard the diamonds, we can't actually squeeze them. So it's important that when you've got a threat, that it's isolated so that only one opponent can do something. So for our diamonds to be an actual threat, we need an opponent to have five diamonds and the other one to have two. Because if someone's only got two diamonds, they can't guard it because of the ace-king being there. Uh, so we want diamonds to be 5-2. And we can win and we can draw drops. Okay. Now... East showed up with five clubs, and West discarded a diamond. So if someone was going to have five diamonds, we think it's going to be West. All right? So for them to guard diamonds, that's who we want to squeeze. But it looks like East has the king of spades. So our issue here is that it looks like East is guarding spades and West is guarding diamonds. So what you can actually do here is something pretty cool, which is called transfer the menace. So we're fairly sure East has the king of spades. It is possible that East has, like, the queen of diamonds and West has the king of spades, but it's more likely that East has the king of spades. So what we can hope for is that the West hand has the jack of, sp jack of spades, and we can transfer it. So at this stage, if we lead the queen and East uh, doesn't cover it, we just run the Queen and we've got the tricks. But if East covers it, we win. And we've now tra hopefully transferred the Spade Menace to the other hand. Again, I wouldn't worry too much about this hand, I'm just showing what is possible. And I'll now open up all the hands so that you can see everything. 
And what we can see is as we run hearts, we only need the tennis spade so we can throw one away, is that the uh, west hand starts to come under pressure. And we don't need the fourth round of diamonds. So some this is what I was talking about earlier, which is some people just look at one suit and don't think about all their threats. So here they look at their good diamonds and just throw their spade away and just keep all their diamonds. It's good to keep little cards or slightly threatening cards in other suits. So here uh, it's important that you realize you don't need the fourth round of diamonds. That's not going to do you any good. Like we don't need to win four diamond tricks in this position. We just want to win three. Uh, so we can afford to throw one away and keep this threat in the yellow suit. And now when we play the final uh, heart, West is in some big trouble. If they throw the jack of spades, then our ten is good. If they throw a diamond, our diamonds are good. So again, let's say they throw a diamond. We haven't seen the jack of spades, so we know that the ten's not good, so that can go. At this stage, we don't know if our diamonds are good, but we know our spades aren't. So again, it didn't require any real counting when we ran stuff. It was just looking for this one relevant card and then seeing uh, what we can do. And our eight becomes good. So that was a bit of a tricky hand, but I was just sort of highlighting some of the things that are possible. All right, on this next one, I'm going to teach uh, some more interesting types of squeezes. This one is a double squeeze. So the bidding goes like this, and they lead the Ace of Clubs. Okay, so on this hand they can actually beat us, but I'll just talk about what you can do. So we have two club losers, and we have uh, um, a spade loser. Now there's a couple of different options available to you, but uh, they start with the Ace of Clubs. Uh, one of the options are, if diamonds are 2-2, two, two, we can just trump the fourth round of spades, and that's fine. They continue with a club, and they play another club, and East throws a spade away. So when East throws a spade away, it feels like spades are probably f breaking poorly, and that East has some uh, length in spades. Uh, so we want to draw trumps and see if they break 2-2. Uh, if they break 2-2, two, two, we're all good. Okay, and they don't. East throws a heart away. So at this stage, we've got a couple of options. We could play a, a spade to the queen, spade to the ace, and try and trump our fourth spade. But if we think about it, East has shown up with only two clubs and only uh, one, uh, two clubs and one diamond. Yeah, I almost forgot what, <laughs> what was going on there. Um, so East has 10 cards in the majors. So our chance of being able to trump that uh, third round of spades without West being able to poke in a diamond is pretty non-existent. Um, it could happen, but instead there's a different option available to us. They, at this stage, they've, they ran three rounds of clubs, and we know that West has is the only person guarding the club suit. Okay, And we're also fairly sure that East has some length in spades, so East will be the only hand guarding the spade suit. So there's something called a double squeeze, where we can get uh, Watch out about one person uh, guarding one suit, the other one guarding another one, and there's a final suit which they both need to guard, 
but they just actually can't because you just uh, they run out of uh, oomph. So at this stage, what we want to do is count clubs and see if West throws away too many clubs, and count spades to see if East throws away too many spades. And we'll show you what happens. So I'll just open it up at this stage. So this one's a bit more complicated than the simple squeeze. It's a double squeeze, but uh, they still come up, and it's important to know what they are. They're tricky to trickier to do, but they're kind of useful. So we want to just draw the final round of trumps at this stage. And East has to hold on to four rounds of spades, or else um, all our spades will be good. And West has to hold on to a club, or else our eight of clubs is good. So Right now, we've drawn all the trumps, and you just want to clarify the situation. So at this stage, I'll just uh, play the spades to see what's happening. Okay, and remember, while this ape might not look threatening, it is actually a threat, and it's important to keep uh, some little cards in all the suits. Um, we don't need four rounds of hearts to win. Uh, we only need one extra trick, so we only need to hold on to two hearts at most, right? So holding on to this eight of clubs as long as possible is useful. Okay, and we see that East is the only one guarding spades. Okay. West threw a club, so there's one club left, and we know that East is guarding the spades. So at this stage, we just play our diamonds. Now West can't afford to throw the club away, because otherwise our eight's good, so... They throw a heart, and we throw a heart, and East has to hold on to that spade to stop our six winning. Okay. And now when we play the final trump, West still has to hold on to that club to stop the eight winning. So they throw a heart, and they can no longer guard hearts. Okay, they're not looking after the hearts. At this stage, we've played our final winner, and we know our eight of clubs isn't a winner, so we toss it away. So we squeezed West out of clubs and hearts, they let go of hearts, and now it's East's turn to feel the burden. And they're sitting there and they feel the pinch, and they can't throw their spade or else my six is a winner, and they can't throw their heart or else that ten will become a winner. Um, now we've counted the clubs and saw that the club didn't appear, and we're counting the spades and we see that the spade didn't appear, and what this means is both opponents had to come down to one heart and our 10's a winner. Okay, so that's a double squeeze. It's a little bit trickier than a simple squeeze, but just thinking about which opponent's guarding what, keeping track of when they let that go or not, and going from there. Okay. So on this one, I'm not giving you, the opponents don't bid and you end up in 7 no trump. And they fire in the ten of hearts. Okay. So here in the 7 no trump, what you want to think about is you've got 4 club winners, 4 heart winners, three spade winners and a diamond. So you've got 12 winners, so again the count is already rectified. We've got 12, we need 13. So again you want to start thinking along the squeeze line. Now our best chance to make this contract is if spades are 3-3 three, three, and our five of spades becomes good. Okay, that seems like the obvious uh, thing to do. Uh, there is one slight extra chance, and that is if the opponent that has four spades, such that they're not breaking, also has the king of diamonds, then they might be in trouble. So what we want our end position to be is ace, king, queen, well, four spades to the ace, king, queen, five, and nothing else, and in my hand, three spades and the queen of diamonds. Okay. Now, if one opponent has the king of diamonds and four spades, they'll be in trouble. They can't guard that. So what we want to do on this hand is just get to that position. So what we have to do is we start taking our winners. 
unblocking the hearts because they are a bit of an issue. And we have to get rid of this Ace of Diamonds. So, because remember, the North Hand's not going to have anything but spades. So we'll take the Ace of Diamonds while we're here. And let's just take all our clubs. So our main hope on this contract was that uh, spades are 3-3, three, three, but we've come up with a secondary chance. Remember one of my things was when to play a squares was just giving yourself that slight extra chance. So here I'll just open it up at this stage. And as we can see the spades don't break, but the hand with the spades does have the king of diamonds. So now, when I play the ace of hearts and throw my diamond away, east is in a real bind. He can't throw something away. Now, I don't need to count spades or anything like that. I just keep uh, paying attention to whether that king of diamonds has shown up or not. And if east throws the king of diamonds, my queen's good and I can claim. If instead they uh, throw a spade away and I haven't seen the king of diamonds, what I want to do is just play my spades. I'm not sure if I'm going to take them all, uh, but I know that my uh, king of my queen of diamonds wasn't good. As it happens, we, the squeeze worked, and we make thirteen. So you, to play a squeeze, you don't need to count everything. Sometimes there's just one card you have to pay attention to, and go from there. And rem the times you want to think about squeezes are when there's nothing else to play for, when you know the other lines won't work, or just to give yourself that little extra chance like in this hand. Okay. This hand you're in four spades, and the opponents lead the queen of clubs. So if you look here, you might see that you've got uh, three heart losers and a diamond loser. Now you could hope that uh, diamonds break 3-3. Three, three. There's another extra chance that you could hope for, which is if one opponent's got five clubs and four diamonds, that you've also could squeeze them out of their fourth club and their diamond. Or you could hope that the ace king of hearts is on side. But all of these things are missing the best possible line. Now, I, just, I snuck this hand in here um, just to make you think that squeezes aren't always the thing that you have to play for. So what you want to do on this hand is actually not a squeeze. There is a very near 100% line to make, well, not 100%, sorry, a very good line on a dummy reversal. If trumps are 3-2, you're almost guaranteed to make, which is the best line. So sometimes it's not just always squeezes, there is other stuff out there. This is, a dummy reversal is something people often miss, and they're very tricky to spot. I don't have any great tips on spotting them, but uh, if you've got really good trumps in a three card holding, it might be what you can do. So what a dummy reversal is, is when you trump lots of times in the long, long trump hand. So here, we rough high, play a spade to our partner's hand, and we play another club, and we rough high, and we play a spade over, and play another club, and we rough high, and we've roughed three times, such that we've roughed so many times that we made the other hand the long trump hand. And we've drew two rounds of trumps, and there's a third one out there, so we have to draw the final round of trumps. So we cross to the king of diamonds, and then take the spade. And now we see if diamonds break 3-3. Three, three. But a dummy reversal is another technique that you can use. Uh, they're tough to spot sometimes. Um, diamonds didn't break, but we can, just in case we miscounted, they get that. Uh, 
So squeezes aren't the only sort of hidden extra chance available to people. Um, there are some other techniques like this going about. And so that was a non-squeeze hand. Um, so you don't just always get yourself caught up in that you have to play squeezes or things like that. There's lots of other options available to you. Okay. This one's got a reasonable amount of bidding in it, so let's uh, goes like this: uh, one heart by us, a one spade over call, uh, two no trumps from our partner, just natural. 10 to 12 with spade stopper, three clubs on the east hand, and we just bashed uh, four hearts. Okay, and the opponents lead the queen of spades. So whenever the bidding gives you lots of information, you want to use that to your advantage. Now here, looking at this hand, it looks pretty ugly. We've got three club losers and a spade loser. And we can't really get to that diamond to throw it away. But we know that East has all the good clubs. And we know that West has eight or more points to overcalls. So they've got uh, three in spades. So West probably has the ace of diamonds. Okay. At any rate, we hope that our ace of spades doesn't get knocked off. And it doesn't. So what we want to do here is start by drawing trumps. Okay, they broke 4-1, but we uh, just draw all the trumps. Now at this stage, there's no real line that we can see to play. We uh, we know the spades aren't breaking, we know the clubs aren't breaking, we can't get to the diamonds to take a diamond finesse or anything like that. So we're, we're left without options. So what can we do? We can possibly think about a squeeze. But one of the key things for squeezes are that you've only got one loser, but we've got four. So what we have to do is rectify the count. So we have to give up some tricks, uh, but maintain control. But give up tricks, let them win some tricks, such that they win three of them. And then after they've done that, uh, we can squeeze them. Uh, so we give up a club and West is actually out of clubs, and East gets to win. If East played a diamond at this stage, we could just throw a loser away and would be fine. So East has to uh, play back a club. I'll open it up so you can uh, see all the hands. So East has to play back a club, because if they play a diamond at any stage, we just throw a loser away. Okay. So we ducked one club, uh, but we still haven't rectified the count yet. We have to have all but one winner. So we have to duck another club. Okay, again, he still can't play a diamond at this stage. So we've lost two, but we've still got two losers. So that's still not good enough. So we have to duck another club. Okay. Now, East might take play a diamond at this stage. If they do that, we can trump. But let's just say they uh, play another club. Okay. And at this stage, we have now rectified the count. There's only one loser. That's the whole process we're going through. Uh, so we ducked a club such that East would win the clubs. And I'd have to keep taking clubs until we got the count just right, such that we've got one loser. Now, at this stage, we play a heart. We don't need the seven of diamonds. We can throw that away. And the east hand's just uh, garbage now. That doesn't matter. 
And now when we play our final winner, West is the only one guarding spades and the only one guarding the ace of diamonds. Now we didn't need to count spades, even though we could. We just keep an eye out for that ace of diamonds. And if we don't see the ace of diamonds, we throw our king away. And then we just hope that our spades are good. We could have counted that out, but you don't need to because we just kept an eye out for that one relevant card. And both our spades are winners. Okay. Uh, so that was just showing you the importance of rectifying the uh, count. If I uh, bring that uh, board back up, Uh, if I can. Uh, can't remember, but uh, if we just played all our hearts straight away, uh, West would have all these useless diamonds and, to throw away. Uh, but by making them lose the clubs, then we couldn't actually... They had to throw diamonds away, and they sort of... We remove space, so when you rectify count, the count and you give up tricks such that you've only got one loser, you're sort of removing people's wiggle room. They don't have enough uh, stuff that you can throw away. Uh, so by doing that, that's when they become sort of too busy and they feel that every card's important. So it's important that when you play squeezes, you think that there's only one loser left. Okay, and... I'll go on to this final hand where we open five clubs and this gets passed out. You can see all the hands. This is just uh, one other slightly complicated squeeze that I'll talk you through. Um, this is one of the ones, I just chucked it in here, uh, where you don't actually need to rectify the count. It's one of the squeezes you can do with more. Um, but East finds the pretty normal lead of the king of diamonds. And you can duck that one. And they just continue a diamond. And at this stage you win. And you've got two losers here. You've got the uh, heart and the diamond loser. Um, but what we can do on this hand is run all of the clubs and hope that the hand with the jack of diamonds also has the king of hearts and has to guard that. So there's a bit of counting to do on this hand. But what we can do, I'll just try and get you to the end position so you can see what can happen. This is called a strip squeeze. Uh, yeah. But there's a whole variety of different squeezes. The main ones you want to work on are simple squeezes. They come up a lot. The others, uh, not as often. Um, okay, so at this point, when we play a club, East, uh, West has to hold on to two hearts to the king. They also have to hold on to the jack of diamonds, or else our ten of diamonds is good. Uh, so they just throw a spade. That's not an issue. But what happens now is we squeeze them into not having any exit cards. So when we do put them in, they now have to lead away from the hearts. And we can get rid of... We've end played them. So a strip squeeze is where you squeeze them into a position where they then get end played. And this is one of the ones where it, you can do it with more than, uh, or you can have two losers on that. Um, but, yeah, it's not, it happens a little bit, and it's worth knowing that it can be done. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, but that's all I was going to cover today. There was a few different squeezes. We talked about simple squeezes, Vienna coups, strip squeezes. I briefly mentioned dummy reversals, which aren't squeezes, and uh, the double squeezes. Um, right back at the start, we covered what is a squeeze, different terminology of squeezes, when we should be playing squeezes, 
and how to play them. I hope this helps and I hope you enjoyed watching it and see you next time.